Our guest in this segment is Daniel Bennett. Uh, he is uh, the man in charge of Homeowners uh, Voice. The homeowners have a voice now as uh, his organization advocates for homeowners, not just in HOAs, but all over the state of West Virginia. Daniel, good morning to you, good sir. Good morning. How are you doing, Mark? Excellent. Great to have you here, sir. Uh, so we talked to Nance Briscoe last week in regards to homeowners associations. And if you could differentiate what you do versus what Nance Briscoe does with the West Virginia Organization of Homeowners Associations. Sure. Well, um, we're Homeowners Voice, and that's our name, and we advocate. We're a advocacy organization organized as a 501c4, which means that we're allowed to not just educate or talk about issues. We can actually go out and help and go, uh, whether it's going in front of the county commissions or going in front of the folks down in um, Charleston, although we were just at the interims and gave testimony uh, before the Joint Committee on mm -hmm. Government Organizations. Um, I believe that the West Virginia Organization of Homeowners Association, or WVOHOA, is an organization that helps um, HOAs. And so if you're a member or uh, on the board, they, they provide educational services. So that we, we as I was saying, mm -hmm. Uh, are a voice for if you're a farmer and you got a home, you're a mobile homeowner, you're outside of an HOA, uh, anybody here in West Virginia, and we're the large, the highest rate of home ownership in the country at about eighty percent. And do you also then, by default, advocate for those who are in an HOA? Yes, we definitely um, advocate for homeowners to make sure that their property rights are respected, their home values are. Uh, always considered and, and uh, always improving, and their general uh, ability to, to be have HOAs when they go rogue, mm -hmm. make sure that they have some way of defending themselves in those types of situations where if their HOA has gone defunct, mm -hmm. and no longer taking care of their roads and things like that. So, yeah. What is uh, mainly legislation-wise? What, what are you pushing? What would you like to see passed? Well, we have been working very closely with um, – the Senate Committee uh, for uh, Government Organization and on developing some legislation. We've had a couple drafts. We're uh, probably going to have a final draft in the next month uh, to finally get our hands on this uh, enormous problem. We don't know how enormous it is, and that's part of the problem. There isn't a clear legal de definition of HOAs, and when we gave testimony yesterday, or the um, on Monday before the um, committee, people were surprised to learn that as an HOA, you do not have to, it's only voluntary, register with the West Virginia Secretary of State. So there are nobody who knows how many HOAs are out there. And what we want to do is make it clear uh, that you do have to register uh, with the Secretary of State and that yearly you just fill out a simple form saying, the status of reserve fund, of whether or not you have a master insurance policy, et cetera. That's all it is. It's just at least let us do a census almost and make sure that we actually know where all the HOAs in West Virginia are. Nance uh, made the statement that in West Virginia, it's not mandated if you buy a home in a homeowners association that you are informed that you have moved into a homeowners association here are the guidelines. Here are what. Here's the fees. Yeah. Uh, many of our listeners on Facebook responded that every time they've bought a home in a homeowners association, that's been presented to them. Yeah. However, she said there are cases when people get a bill after a year that they're past due on their association dues, and they had no idea what they were buying into. Is that going on? Uh, Nance was correct about that. Um, it, it, if you have a good title search and you you uncover that information, but honestly, when we eaten our own dog food, so to say, and gone to the um, county clerk to look up some of this stuff, it's not always being filed. So if you're doing a title search and it's not there, it's hard to even know. So it's, it's a mess when the Secretary of State doesn't have a, a clear grasp on it because they're not allowed to, because it's voluntary, or when the, there is no um, right to know when you go into it. So usually you find out. I knew about it when we moved in, it was 150 a year, and we were well aware of it, but uh, not everybody does learn about it, even though many do. You said there are a lot of rogue 
HOAs out there, mm-hmm. and I know in the past, <clears throat> this program you referred to HOAs as kind of the Wild West in West Virginia in mm-hmm. regard to uh, regulation. Uh, what do you mean by rogue HOAs? What do you mean by the Wild West? Okay. And uh, what would you propose to, to fix it all? Well, when you have, in one case, um, we're getting cases referred to us sometimes from the Attorney General's office because they're not allowed under the Consumer Protection Act to deal with these things like they would for normal businesses. We some, we've been getting cases. We have one case where the treasurer can't get bank, bank statements from the president. And that we call this going rogue. When you have the HOA board that doesn't have proper meetings, doesn't deal uh, with uh, making sure their public information is made available, that they're running roughshod over the uh, homeowners there, and there's very little recourse outside of private action, meaning hire an attorney for a lot of money and and uh, essentially be suing your H, your own HOA board or other neighbors. It's what we what we propose is first finding out how big an issue it is, mm-hmm. and that's why we're working on this legislation to at least make sure that they all have to do it and all uh, publicly state whether or not they've filed with the county clerk, whether they are paying uh, their property taxes on the common elements, whether they are um, have a reserve fund or master insurance policy. They don't have a master insurance policy and their HOA gets sued. They could, each of the individual homeowners could be liable for significant sums of uh, money if there's a judgment against them. Uh, I am the president of the Homeowners Association where I live. Mr. Gilstrap is the social chairman <laughs> of his... And board member. And board member, and his <laughs> wife is a board member as well. Uh, where I live, we have to, to uh, do a reserve study every five years, and then we have to fund the solutions that the reserve study indicates would be needed to bring us up to an acceptable financial level of reserves. That's mandated uh, by law across the bridge here. And there are, There is no law that says you have to do a reserve study in a homeowners association in West Virginia, correct? I believe so. And uh, more importantly, quite often the uh, homeowners don't even know that that's a possibility to do a reserve study. So we, we want to make sure that the homeowners in who, who are HOA members actually know what the normal course of action is to protect them because no one wants to be hit with thousands of dollars of assessments because they haven't been doing their due diligence and creating a reserve fund. Because you in, in here you have to fund a reserve to fix the roads because the HOA is responsible for the roads in West Virginia. Yes, generally in the unincorporated areas, yes. Mr. Gilstrap. <clears throat> I'm still not sure I understand what what the problems are. You, you passed out a, it looks like a PowerPoint, that um, the, the cover slide is the alarm is going off in West Virginia due to the HOA situation. Mm-hmm. I'm still not sure what the HOA situation, what is the itch we're trying to scratch here? There are several things. Um, we hear from homeowners. We had a, actually at the Berkeley County Youth Fair a booth where people came and sat down with us and told us, you know, about some horror stories about when their HOA boards didn't do what they were supposed to do, when they uh, wouldn't allow certain things, where they put up roadblocks. Um, and I just mentioned where one of them, where there's a huge assessment and the person who's treasurer can't get access to the bank, can't go into the bank to ask for the records, and they're the treasurer with fiduciary responsibility. So we hear from a lot of people, we are very happy that a lot of HOAs have the wherewithal, sometimes they hire property management firms to get things done, but that is not the case everywhere, and we don't have our hands around it, and so the legislation would allow us to just find out what the state of HOAs are here in West Virginia. That's all it's designed to do. Dan, a question's been asked Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the the development that lady's in has a booklet of covenants, but she has no, but they have no HOA. Are the covenants binding if there's no HOA? I believe so. And that would mean that she could get uh, the HOA to be reformed or to, to come into existence. Uh, but it's a difficult thing because sometimes in those types of situations, the people are just happy the way it is, and they're not going to sign on to that. There's also 
um, legislation, I mean, a uh, law on the books that allow people who live along a road that's not being fixed to uh, create a road management association where you get 60% of the people to have sign a petition and either you create the association or you turn it over to the county that then assesses the people who live along that road. So there are different things you can do, but that's what we call, by the way, a zombie HOA, where there's nobody <laughs> actually doing it, but the covenant says there should be. Let me go to your organization very quickly, sure. Homeowner's Voice. Mm -hmm. I've heard of Homeowner's Association over the years, mm -hmm. but Homeowner's Voice is new. Is it a new organization? Yes, it's very new. We're uh, just a year old. We we were working for another year before that to, to set it up. But one of the things we are is when I ran for office, yeah. um, I walked and, and went to every single part of the district, and, and when I... I, I didn't succeed, but when I finished, my wife said, why don't you keep working on this issue that you sort of found? And I looked around, and there didn't seem to be any organizations, either here in West Virginia, honestly, I couldn't find any across the country that were representing homeowners. You can get tenants, you can get nurses, you can get almost everything else. But um, And I was like, well, if nobody has done this, I'm going to start it up myself and called it Homeowner's Voice and made sure that it was a 501c4, not a 501c3. So that allows us to go before county commissions and legislators and advocate for changes, not just try and help people and say, well, we can't do anything to help you because, you know, we can't go and, and talk with the legislators and get them to change things if that's what needs to happen. But since you represent all homeowners, those in HOAs and those outside of HOAs, yes. mm -hmm. isn't there a danger of losing your focus? I hope not. <laughs> it's a, it's a, we, you got an awful broad community I, you're I trying think, to represent. I think what we're trying to do is always looking from the perspective of a homeowner, and that's protecting their property rights, their ability to, there is something called the bundle of rights that all homeowners have. And we want to make sure that people, <laughs> when they're a homeowner, have that. And I think that's that single focus of just looking at them as a homeowner is what's needed rather than, you know, someone who represents homeowners associations or tenants or something like that. So it gives us a focus that makes it clear what we're doing and always at the importance of making sure your home values stay up and that your property rights are respected. Now, one of our earlier guests this morning uh, mentioned mineral rights. Mm -hmm. And do you get involved with mineral rights um, um, issues? It's one of those things where we have not heard that type of situation here in West Virginia. Um, I know that that's a big issue, um, and we're not touching that yet because no one's come to us and talked about it. But again, we'll focus on what the rules are as they are to help them within the rules and then if we need to do a petition or to to have people speak before the any of the PSC or the legislators or whatever to say hey we need some help here but that's we haven't run across that problem yet what's the more common uh, comment from regarding homeowners associations from members of homeowners association is it more likely to be a board that is asleep at the switch, or is it more likely to be a board that is overzealous and and issuing a lot of fines for trash cans and such? Why, why can't the option also be a, a well-functioning board? Because nobody's going to go to them to talk to them about something that's working. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, I just wanted to come by and say that the board is doing everything it's supposed to do. <laughs> that's not that kind of organization, I don't think. Well, the, what was so striking when we uh, were at the Berkeley County Youth Fair and people would come up and we'd say, hey, are you a member of an HOA? And so... I can't use any of those words that you okay, use, one of the but they were using yes. some of those words <laughs> to describe why they're not in an HOA. Uh -huh. And that is a very common sense because of both being in busybody ones, you know, where there are fines and, and, and whatnot and can seem capricious. And whenever you find someone for garbage, we, we uh, know someone who they take pictures and it wasn't even a picture of their house with the garbage. So there's uh, there's some of that, but honestly, there's uh, others where their roads aren't being taken care of. You know, there's been a pothole at the end of a, a road that, you know, they blamed uh, Apple Valley 
for their trucks or whatever, but it's not being dealt with year after year after year. So it's a real mix. That's a case where you be careful what you wish for, right? I mean, if you have this, uh, if you're responsible for the maintenance of the road in your neighborhood, and finally, yes, we're going to get it fixed. So here is your fifteen thousand dollars share of the of the road maintenance. Yeah. It's a, in, in the assessment. You, you know, the, the, here's the issue I have with that. And, and again, I come at this from a person who's kind of knee deep in it with my own association, but. Uh, and I've had this conversation recently where it was, uh, well, we're trying to keep our fees low. Who cares about the responsibilities that someone's going to inherit 20 years from now? And that's the same as, well, I'll just take all my motor oil and pour it down the creek. Who cares what the person down there gets? It's it's what's good best for me because I don't want to go through the process of disposing something. You have, you have responsibility to the people who come after you mm -hmm. as well. And, and the reason why you have that responsibility is because the people that came before you, if, if their interest was it's just about me, then we'd all be speaking German right now. Okay? So you do have a responsibility to the people who come after you, and you have to act fiscally responsible in that manner too, which is why so many people are justifiably upset about our national debt right now yeah. uh, too. But, but before you go, Bill, uh, I would also say that the bad name HOAs get is twofold. One, if you don't want people telling you that your trash can has to come in at some point, don't move into a homeowners association, buy a place unincorporated, and you can leave your trash outside all day long. All week long, all year long. You can leave your Christmas lights up all year round. That's fine. But when you move into a homeowners association regulated neighborhood, in theory, you get a book that says, you moved in here. Here's what the rules are. If you don't abide by them, here are the consequences. Now, some homeowners association are fine happy. We're not. We the, A fine is the absolute at last thing that we want to levy on any homeowner who's in violation of something. And it is truly a last resort because when we get into that area, we're also getting into lawyers and now legal fees. And now you're getting into that whole mess. Some, some HOAs are overzealous. They are. But there's a common sense middle ground here between the person who's offended by the HOA that moved into an HOA controlled neighborhood and the HOA, which is trying to act with an iron fist. And, and I think if you just find that happy ground, you can eliminate half the problems at least. Well, and I think it comes down to the reasonableness of the uh, the directors, whoever is enforcing this, the homeowner, the um, architectural committee, or whatever. <clears throat> I came, you know, the previous uh, neighborhood in Fairfax. They literally were hundred dollar fines for people who left the trash cans out. If they pick up on a on a on a Monday, if it was still there on Tuesday afternoon, you get a hundred dollar fine. Yeah, that's people a bit who parked in their driveway were, and that and that's the and that's the issue. Yeah. it's not the absolute value of the rules, but come on, I've. I've I was at a party and I didn't get home in time, you know, whatever the case may be in, in the terms of the trash can or parking in the driveways was another one. I think that's where the the bad rap comes mm -hmm. from is it is from people who are just kind of power drunk, which is the classic right. HOA board. Well, I just quickly to respond yeah. sure. to, to both yeah. of you. Um, one, we're trying to focus on the things that have to do with the common elements. In other words, if you you as an HOA here in West Virginia can have your own sewage. You can do your stormwater man management. You can do your own water supply. The PSC, the Public Service Commission, does not appear to know all of the places that they're supposed to be regulating for those things. And when it's a $100 fine, okay, it's a $100 fine. The thing is that that's not a, the $100 fine. That is, is when the HOA then sues, and then all of the fees, if they win, and so quite often you can talk about the wrong paint color can cost you $40,000. So it isn't just the $100 fines. It can be a substantial private action where because there isn't any arbitration or mediation in some of these places, the HOAs not only run roughshod, but can actually cost you tens of thousands, hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of dollars over very minor things. We're more concerned with, as a homeowner's voice, with those common elements to make sure the roads are working. Right. If you want to live in a place where they fine you for your paint color, that's your choice. But the roads are where the ambulances go, where the fire trucks go, where the water you drink, those types of things are really our concern, not so much, you know, the $100 fines. Bill? 
Now, I was going to pick up on what you said a while ago, that there's a, a, there's a sweet spot in the middle. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the end result is the individual downstream is going to be picking up the cost, and their first reaction is not to go to the billfold, not to go to the pocketbook. It's to go to the county commission, say, bail us out, or go to the state, one of the legislators, bail us out. And uh, this was, uh, as a county commissioner, this was very, very common. HOA coming in with this uh, sob story said our predecessors did not take care of us we did not institute some self-funding we want you we want the county to bail us out and which which is the reason why in maryland they have instituted a mandatory reserve study to be done for hoas that does not exist in west virginia so it's truly as nance briscoe said buyer beware when you move into a, a neighborhood controlled by an hoa if you're responsible for replacing the roads and they haven't funded that for the last 20, 30 years, and that bill comes due, you could be on the hook as you first day you move in for a giant assessment because the people that came before you weren't responsible to fund the roads that they were supposed to. And the, the roads are the ones that get a lot of attention, but the water system, the corporate water system, the corporate sewer system also deserves some attention. Oh, yeah, that's very true. In, in Maryland, what is a, an appropriate reserve designed as? Is it a percentage of something with... How do you, you do this study on the reserves, yes. and, and then what's, it, what's the right answer? They lay out, here are your uh, one-year, five-year, 10-year, 20 whatever your, your, your like we have walls. There are, there are walls that were constructed as part of the development built into a ridge. Well, the wall is projected the last 80 years. Here's how much a wall costs. Here's the annual rate of inflation. Here's how much this wall would cost in 80 years. Is that something I have to fund today? Certainly not at a full replacement level. But you do have to have a certain amount of money set aside so that the needs are met in the near future. You've got sidewalks that need replaced every so many years. If it's something more permanent or less permanent like mulch, common, common areas, that sort of thing, those are things that you, you know, are obviously more easily funded. Uh, but all of the things that you have in a neighborhood at some point along the way need replaced. And do you have the money to replace them when the bill comes due? Because if you don't, then the people that move in after you are going to be bearing the costs of that. And there's been enough complaints about that that they want to make sure that that's not the situation. So as a, the association president and with the board, you take that aggregate number, mm -hmm. apportion it by year, divide it by the number of households, and that's... That's, that's, the, that's now what the new assessment has to be. Assessment or dues? Well, it's an annual. It's You pay them quarterly. Okay. So we don't, we don't do one time. Uh, we need... Fifty dollars a month plus five thousand dollars every five years. It's here's what it costs okay. per quarter, and those costs have gone up as has everything else. Daniel, how do people get in touch with you about uh, Homeowners Voice? Well, you can go to our website homeownersvoice.com. You can send me an email at advocate at homeownersvoice.com. Uh, you can call me, and um, my cell number is six eight one three five zero one 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 two. And we hope t uh, to have a petition out and. Uh, be uh, down there in uh, January for the next session with some legislation to finally get our hands on this on this issue so that we can uh, move forward as a state and power the growth that we really need here. As you make progress, please let us know. Will do. Thank you. Daniel Bennett, 